This is TJ with Tech Made Easy. Welcome to the channel. My channel is all about making things affordable, practical, and easy. There's been a few times on this channel that I've talked about 10 gig networking and how to get into 10 gig networking for just a little over $300, including your switch, your NIC, and cables. So one of the ways that I accomplish this is by buying used 10 gig NICs. And you can get used 10 gig NICs that start around, they've come down a lot too, the used ones, around $25. Um, but I noticed that there were some brand new 10 gig NICs from China for $17. Now I've never seen a NIC brand new for $17. And they range from $17 to $20. And when I was doing that presentation, it kind of uh, it kind of set me back. So I'm like, wait a minute, is this for real? So I went ahead and ordered one. I had to find out for myself. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the good, the bad, the ugly about these 10 gig NICs from China. So let's get started. Okay, so before we go jumping into uh, the performance of this, I, I have four 10 gigabit cards here, okay? And this one here I got from Amazon. It, I, it was around $70. Um, and the, and I, there is a reason why I'm going to be talking about all of these here. This, this one here is the one from China. Um, I don't have the bracket on here uh, because it came with the... Uh, it came with the... Uh, the shorter bracket so I took it off so I could just put it in the system anyway so it does come with both brackets though so this is the one from China now um, again it's using an Intel chipset doesn't necessarily mean it's an Intel card obviously they're just using an Intel chipset this here is an Intel card in fact uh, you can't probably can't see it but it does say Intel on here um, Later on in the video, I, I couldn't remember if it was a true Intel card because these cards, um, Intel chipsets, uh, Dell uses them. Other manufacturers will use them, use the Intel chipset. So it doesn't necessarily have to be an Intel as long as you, it has the Intel chipset. So when you go on eBay, when you go look for these cards on eBay, you would type in X540 and it would pull up Intel chipset cards. But at, at any rate, um, and that's what I was showing him in the uh, video where I was talking about getting into uh, 10 gig networking for a little over $300. So basically what happened was is that these, this Chinese one popped up and I'm going, man, I have to try it. And it was like, I think when I say $17, it, it could have been $17.99. We'll, we'll talk about that. Um, and so I went ahead and ordered it. But uh, the reason why I'm showing you this is that this heat sink, I don't know anything about this heat sink, and you can see that this heat sink on this Intel is bigger. This one here, this is an Asus, and I have uh, several of these Asus as well, and they work great. Um, this one I have in a, um, I took it out of one of my servers that's just a, a server that I, I mess around with. Um, and then this one here, and this one is really small for 10 gigabit, I, um, but I needed a small form factor one. And I also needed uh, a PCI slot that was that was smaller than this one here, and it, it does work. Um, I haven't tested it thoroughly. Um, it is going into a server, so I just wanted to show you these differences because um, it's going to become important in the end when we talk about the ugly. Um, so, but let's just go ahead. Let's get on the desktop. Let's go ahead and test this thing out. Okay, I want to explain how I, how I did this test. Um, I have a TrueNest server that's a 10 gigabit server. Um, it copies over at 10 gigabit. And you can see on this chart here, I was doing some copying here. And you can see this 9.3. This is where I was copying from another, from a dis different desktop that doesn't have the Intel card in it. Um, and it was 9.3, so basically real close to 10 gigabit. Then I was copying a file over to my desktop which has an NVMe nut, and it was copying over pretty close to 10 gigabit as well. And then these others here, uh, this just means I was copying files over that didn't quite um, get to um, 10 gigabit. So I do have an Intel card that has that same chipset on it that the China one has, and I tested both of those because I wanted to see uh, the speed comparisons between both. 
But let me just uh, show you here what I found out. And please stay tuned because <clears throat> the good only lasts so long with this card. And the ugly, I'll tell you what the ugly is here. Or I'll tell you what the bad is here in a minute before we get to the ugly. But when I was testing the card, I was just taking some of these files and copying these over. Now, I, when I copy this over, I do have a question. So this starts at one gigabit. Um, and this, this is how my Intel card performed as well. They basically performed the same. Um, but, <clears throat> and this is a question I have for uh, any Windows gurus out there that are watching this because I used to use Windows as my desktop maybe five years ago. I switched to Linux. Um, and so most of my 10 gig experience on the desktop is with the Linux desktop, not with the Windows desktop. And I do know, I, I probably need to back up here. When you install these cards, a 10 gigabit card in Windows, you ha do have to go into your uh, device manager. And, and this is the driver right here for that Chinese. So this is the thing is that the driver for the Chinese card I had to run um, <clears throat> to get the driver, I had to run Snappy Driver. If you don't know what Snappy Driver is, it's a program that goes and looks at your system for drivers that you may need. So Snappy Driver, I was able to install these. Um, I tried Intel, but it didn't see that there was an Intel card in it. So again, this is from China. I don't know what they do. I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the hanky-panky that they, they pull on products there not just with this card. Um, so, but when you're in this, you have to go into your adapter and you have to change these advanced settings and you have to put jumbo packs as, at 9014. And then you put, <clears throat> now you don't have to do this. I just do this because I'm on a 10 gig network. I just put it at 10 gigabit full duplex. Um, you can leave it on auto if you want. So I've done that to both of them. And um, so, <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do here is I'm, I'm now going to copy this back over to my desktop and my desktop's running an MVME and you're you're going to notice here that it does hesitate to start I don't know why it hesitates to start because um, I in this particular Windows machine that I have I do have I have a ASUS card in it and it doesn't hesitate when I go to copy it over um, <clears throat> but right but I swapped it out for the Intel card now I tested the Chinese card along with my Intel card. And like I said, they did perform about the same. Um, and let's just go ahead and copy this Alita. This is a 10 gigabit video file. And we'll see here, it starts off at 10 gigabit. Now this is my question for you Windows gurus out there. Um, uh, I don't know why it doesn't stay at 10 gigabit. Why doesn't it stay at that speed? I've seen lots of people demo and they there's it's at 10 gigabit speed and believe me my true nas server i mean it has 128 gigabytes of ram uh utilizes all that for copying files when i copy file on linux in fact let's look at this chart here now um this number here this 9.3 this is my linux desktop copying a file over and then and then this 9.3 here is my linux desktop copying uh, a file from the server to my desktop, which my Linux uh, desktop has an NVMe in it. So it's taking full advantage of the 10 gigabit speed of my server uh, with Linux. But for some reason, Windows does not, and it doesn't matter what 10 gigabit card I have in here. It can be my Asus card, um, and, and there's been a couple others I've tried. I, I can never get it to be steady at 10 gigabits, and when it finally gets done, copying it averages out um, almost at five gigabits uh, to the server and to the uh, desktop. Again, this is both the Chinese cards and my Intel cards that I, that I was testing. Um, so uh, as far as performance goes, that pretty much is the good uh, where the bad comes in. If you don't know about the Linux, if you're not a Linux user, if you use a Linux desktop, Linux has all the drivers baked into what they call the kernel. And so um, when, you, when you load up Linux, it'll automatically find whatever's in your system and applies the correct driver to it automatically. You really don't have to install drivers 
it doesn't mean that there aren't drivers to install sometimes but you generally don't have to install drivers well this card this chipset this 10 gigabit chipset has been out for a long time many many years so it's baked into the kernel but when i put it in my linux system it would not recognize the card at all um, and so and there was no reason for me to try to install the driver because it, the driver is baked into the kernel so i don't know what chinese is doing with this card i don't know if it, um, but it did work with um, the windows intel chipset driver it did work with windows okay in fact what i'm going to do here is i just want to uh, switch over to my linux desktop for a minute and then i'm going to go and beat man stay tuned because you got to know what the ugly is um you do not want to buy this this uh card and i'll explain why okay so here we are at my linux desktop and here we have true nest in the background I had to pause the video for a while, so I don't have all that uh, graph history that we had when we were testing uh, the NIT card in, in uh, Windows. But I just want to show you here as I copy this file over uh, to the server. So uh, this is media folder that's on my desktop. This is my server, Hope NAS. Um, and we're just going to, it's the same server we did before. And so we're just going to copy that over. You're going to see that this is copying at 10 gigabytes. So the way this was reported, it says 1.3 gigabytes, but that's that's 10 gigabytes uh, Linux. I don't know why it reports it like that. Um, so so you'll be able to see as the chart comes up here that it's going to be the same as this one here. Um, I um, I just came back and copied a few things here, and then had to leave again. So okay, so now that that's done copying to the server, let's go ahead and copy it over to the desktop, and you're going to see that. Uh, again, this is actually a 30 gig file that I'm copying over. Um, so and you're going to see that it's, it's copying over it at, at 10 gigabytes per second. So uh, the thing is, is I, I, I don't know why Windows doesn't uh, copy at the same speed. I'm using the same exact computer. Um, I have an HP Z440. I have two of them. And uh, both Intel NIC cards were in the same system. Um, so, and the, the, the Intel NIC card uh, that is mine that I got off, used off of eBay is actually in a, another TrueNAS server that is kind of my demo server. And it works fine in there and it copies everything over as 10 gigabits. So I know it's not any, anything to do with the cards. I, I don't know what, what settings, I don't know if I'm missing a setting in Windows uh, because for years, all I know is you had to change those, uh, uh, those uh, packs to 90, 90 I, I have to do the same thing in Linux. I have to make the same settings in Linux to get 10 gigabit speed as I do in Windows. So um, I'm not really sure why Windows isn't more efficient at copying at 10 gigabit. Um, but my point that I'm trying to make too is let's get to the ugly of this whole situation. I was first testing this in Windows 11. And uh, I thought maybe the inconsistency of cocking 10 gigabits over with my card or the eBay card was Windows 11. So then I put it. Then I went ahead and and, and um, I have an NVMe with uh, Windows 10 on it, and I went ahead and put Windows 10 in my system, and went ahead and ran it that way. Well, in the middle of testing, the Chinese Intel NIC up on the screen threw up. A big huge error message and that was it the card was dead and I was fortunate that it didn't do any harm to my my computer I'm um, so all of the co copying that you're seeing was with my uh, Nick from eBay um, but I wasn't worried about it because when I tested it the first time they both got the same performance it's just that the Chinese Nick didn't last very long now the reason why I showed those other Nick's uh, at the beginning is because I'm not sure of the heat sink that's on that NIC. Is it a very good one? Does it withdraw the heat from it? Um, did the chips just get too hot because of the heat sink? I don't know why, but that that but that um, NIC gave up the ghost. And this is the whole thing about buying anything from China. Um, I did a video maybe six months ago where I saw that I could get a four terabyte drive from China for around 17 bucks. And so I went ahead and bought four or five of those, and then I put them in a RAID array, RAID 5, 
I striped them, did individual tests on them, and they tested fine. But I was only copying, like I am here, uh, a file or two back and forth. And uh, they seemed to do fine. And then I had a viewer say, hey, have you tried to fill up the drive? And I go, no, I haven't. So then I grabbed like maybe 20 video files and, and tried copying them over. And that drive crashed hard. It still worked, but it would just crash. So whether I was doing a RAID 5, whether I was striping it, whether it was a single drive, whether it was NT formatted as NTFS, formatted in Linux, formatted with uh, ZFS, they just crash whenever I tried to copy a whole bunch of files. So my point is, is that you got to be really careful when you buy anything new from China. I just don't trust China. Um, let's look really quick at this graph here. So you can see here that both times I'm at 9.3 gigabytes, which is almost 10 gigabytes per second, uh, copying over uh, with my Linux desktop. And uh, so now I have bought and used stuff from China before. I don't try to buy used stuff from there very often, uh, be, just because of the time it takes. So if I can, if I even have to pay a little bit more to buy something from a recycler in the U.S., I will do that. But every once in a while, um, sometimes the only place I can get it used. And when I say talk used, I'm talking networking, I'm talking Xeons, because all my workstations are Xeons, my servers are Xeons. Um, I get uh, so. So anyway, just be aware when you buy anything new and the price seems too good to be true. The sad thing is, it doesn't even matter if it's a legit thing coming from China. All of these people pulling these shenanigans from China are ruining the, the, the respectable ones from China. And just so you know, even on those SSDs, what they do is they take the controller card and they reprogram the controller card so the computer sees four terabytes. Um, but it's not a four terabyte drive in there. It might be a 64 gigabyte, 228 cheap gigabyte, who knows what they are. And that, and that's the point with the card. I don't know if they program the card. I don't, uh, so it, sh so it shows up as a, as an Intel NIC. Uh, although Windows with, with uh, snappy driver did find the driver, but it would not work in Linux. So I don't know what kind of shenanigans they're playing around with this 10 gig card, but obviously you don't want to buy them. So I hope this was enlightening, helpful. This is TJ with Tech Made Easy. Have a great day. Now that was easy peasy.